Nike's Exceed gives the Korean maker yet another option to offer buyers seeking a stylish, well-equipped compact SUV. You might feel that this bulging segment doesn't really need any further options, but Kia was determined that the Seed family should offer one and has engineered this smart crossover contender with characteristic thoroughness. Somehow, Kia has managed to make this XC the most comfort orientated member of the Seed family, which is surprising because higher riding SUV orientated models usually have to be set up more firmly than the conventional hatchbacks they're based upon. The Korean engineers didn't have to do that here thanks to the installation of clever hydraulic bump stops integrated into the front suspension, which improve both comfort and control. You'll particularly notice the difference this makes when thumping through potholes and going over speed humps. All of this, the Korean maker has managed to achieve without significantly adding to the level of body roll exhibited by other seed body styles. A bit more steering feel through the bends would be nice, but there's no shortage of traction and basic composure thanks to a stiff K2 chassis and a torque vectoring system that through quicker turns lightly dabs the front brakes to help tuck the nose in and ease you urgently through the corner. A typical customer of this would-be SUV won't care much about that, or about the fact that, as usual with cars in this class, there's no four-wheel drive option and off-road capability is pretty much non-existent, though ride height of this body style is raised slightly to 184 millimetres if, as here, your Exceed rides on larger 18-inch rims. Of more relevance to likely buyers will be the engine options on offer, and there are five. If your focus is on petrol power, then it's quite likely you'll be looking at the base three-cylinder 118 bhp 1-litre TGDI unit, or possibly at the 138 bhp 4-cylinder 1.4-litre TGDI power plant you'll need if you want the option the brand's 7DCT auto gearbox. There are two 1.6 CRDI diesel variants, a base 114 bhp unit and the 134 bhp version we're trying here, which manages up to 64.2 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and 116 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2 emissions. If you want to do better, you'll need the PHEV plug-in derivative based around a 1.6 litre GDI petrol engine and a six-speed DCT auto gearbox. This uses a 44.5 kilowatt electric motor mated to an 8.9 kilowatt hour battery pack that, when fully charged, can deliver a 36 mile WLTP rated electric driving range. Time to take a seat up front, and the raised ride height does mean you sit a fraction higher, but the feel isn't especially commanding. If you want that, you'll prefer the brand's more SUV-like Sportage model. Typical crossover buyers who want an easy transition from something more conventional may not mind this, and they should be right at home with Kia's contemporary cabin architecture, which sees this sculptured centre console angled slightly towards the driver. It's just a pity that the ambience of mainstream models like this one is a bit dark and dour. The priciest variants show how different and more interesting this cabin could be, but unfortunately brighter trimming packages aren't offered further down the range. In compensation, both the ergonomics and the driving position here are difficult to fault. And providing you can avoid entry-level spec, you get this excellent 10.25-inch touchscreen satellite navigation with telematics centre dash display. This has an incorporated eSIM chip that retrieves and updates all kinds of data as you drive. Plus, it's also integrated with the company's latest UVO Connect telematics technology, which allows a super useful feature we've not so far seen on any other car we've tested. The ability to connect two phones via Bluetooth at once. We'll finish, as usual, with a look at the boot, which is 426 litres in size. This area is accessed by a rather high loading lip, but it's deep and regularly shaped. For bigger items, you'll need to flatten the 6040 backrest, which frees up 1,378 litres of total fresh air. 
Life is certainly a great deal more interesting for someone wanting to buy a family hatchback-sized car these days. Say what you like about the current SUV craze, but it's certainly delivered up much more of a want-one factor when it comes to the purchase of a C-segment model like this. And the XC delivers this with the kind of smart styling you'd normally expect to have to stretch to a premium brand to get. In short, if you're shopping for this kind of car, there are plenty of reasons why you might want this one.